Greetings brother and Hasburger Donkey here and I finally finished the next set of dwarves for my uh, old hammer dwarf project like proper old hammer as in you know 90s and here they are I finished the eight uh, monopose plastic dwarves that I was working on and I'm really happy with them I'll give you a little bit of a flyby and zoom in in a second I'm just gonna put them all down and, uh, yeah, they were, uh, certainly a lesson, <laughs> again, in, in, uh, sort of making sure that you use as many different colors as possible with these kind of monopose figures, because otherwise they become incredibly boring and repetitive, and really only through making them as ludicrously colorful and different as you can, you can really sort of, uh, you know, make them something special. So as you can see, I even went for some of the uh, stripy tunics that everybody tried back in the olden times on these because they were, they, a few of them on the box had stripy tunics. But I opted to only go for two. Uh, one with sort of a cream color and purple and one with a white and a blue. And then for all the other ones, I went with uh, various, various different colors. We got a teal and blue, uh, teal and, and yellow, uh, sort of a purple and ice blue. This guy in the back, I was very, very... Um, I definitely wanted to have one of these with red shoes, because on the box art, uh, a bunch of them have red shoes. And just kind of as a callback to, uh, you know, how the studio painted these. Back in the day, I wanted to wanted to do that, and uh, we got a gray one and a green one and all sorts of different beard colors. I also used this to basically um, establish, and I, I did write that down in my painting journal as well. The the different beard colors that I was going to use across this army, because with stuff like that, I I do find it is more easy to sort of you know establish just a certain few colors. I mean, in this case, it's eight different ones, which is still a lot. Uh, to just have across the army, it gives the it gives the army enough um, variation, and it uh, but it's it doesn't become incredibly tedious painting it if you just have a good set, and I also made sure that they were paints that weren't annoying to paint, so I picked ones that I actually enjoy and where the uh, paints cover nicely, so I don't have to you know uh, with 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 something as common as the beards which you know all the dwarves have I, I didn't want something that would take a long, long time. Let me turn a few of these over so you can see them from the back. They do, of course, all have these sort of um, hood things under their helmets, um, which... Oh, I'm just going to turn them all around. Uh, you know, which, which I also wanted to have in different colors, just to give them plenty of variation. And then with uh, the shoes, except, of course, on the one with the red shoes, with the belts, pouches, uh, and the axe handles, I went with just sort of standard colors that I'm also going to be using across most of the army, because uh, I still believe in the whole thing where you, you know, you if you put a lot of color on your miniatures, there also needs to be stuff that blends in the background, and I think belts, pouches, and boots and stuff, they're just not that important. So, yeah. And of course the green bases again. I know they're not everybody's, you know, favorite thing. Uh, I've had a, a comment or two that were like, ah, nice except for the bases. But I like them. I like it this way. I, For me, the, the goblin green bases uh, with the dry brushing are mandatory for this kind of thing. For me, it makes it, um, you know, that era of Warhammer. It's it's just it's it's a part of it for me. I if I had just regular sort of you know black rims and uh, sand and uh, grass on these, they wouldn't feel like you know a '90s Warhammer to me. They would just feel like regular old fantasy miniatures. And I I paint a lot of regular fantasy miniatures, so um, yeah, I just wanted to have these be as old hammer as possible. As you can see, I also went with a. Um, a shared shield design on all of them. I, I did want something to bind them together as a unit. And um, yeah, I thought that the shields would, would be good in that. Uh, what I did is, I when I bought these, not I didn't get enough shields 
uh, from the old. Uh, they they did come with shields, of course, and they um, the shields are like there's stuff on them already, sort of like um, sculpted on the shields. So you don't really have to freehand anything. Um, but those sculpted shields, because I don't have that many of them, I think I'm going to use them for a different unit. Maybe my iron iron breakers. Um, and so for these plastic warriors, because I, I do have a lot of other warriors as well that will also need shields. Um, so for the plastic warriors, I went with uh, shields that I had left over from my Oathmark dwarves. So these are Oathmark dwarf shields. And uh, because the Oathmark dwarves, ha their shields, um, of course, come with um, shield bosses. Um, and... Uh, I didn't really want those because it doesn't feel very sort of old hammer to have them. Uh, I think old hammer is very, uh, in my opinion at least, uh, the old Games Workshop, they're very famous for not having that on the round shields at all. The round shields are just, you know, basically shields that the models carry on their arms, you know. So um, basically what I did is uh, the red thing in the middle, that is the shield boss and I just cut it flat and uh, basically used that as a guide to paint the anvil around. And then the, the shield boss itself, you know, the, the cut flat shield boss, um, I sort of used it as like a, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a rune, obviously, but um, I think it, it helps that it actually is 3D. If you look at it, you can, you can see that. It's 3D and it kind of just helps the effect. I think it makes it look better as if it was just the red circle painted on so yeah I, I kind of just made that work for me I suppose and um, yeah I'm, I'm really happy with how they came out uh, I, I need another seven of these plastic guys but I'm gonna wait a while until I do them uh, and they'll form three ranks of five and then the front rank of five for this unit will be metals uh, I have two of these sort of um, mid-90s, I want to say they're fourth edition, I'm not entirely sure when the new clansmen, or are they still from the old range? I'm not sure, actually, I don't know. They might, mm, I, I don't know, I don't want to speculate. They might be Imperial Dwarves, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But I, I have two that fit in uh, with these Plastic Warriors really well, style-wise, uh, and they'll be on the, on the, um, very end of the unit and then the three in the middle are a mix of uh, miniatures i don't have them on hand so otherwise i could tell you i think i think i have an original bannerman for these for this unit i'm mm, i'm not entirely sure and i think i have uh, um the musician for this one is going to be a, a norse dwarf with a horn I don't remember. I, I have a I have a lot of miniatures, so I, I kind of get confused with these a little bit. But yeah, so for now I have a small unit of eight warriors. Um, and of course they go together with the other miniatures that I already did, that you've already seen. I'm just gonna just gonna pull them all out, show you a little shot of the army. Um, yeah, I'm still very much enjoying this project, but I think it's going to be a while until I start the next thing. So, um, I, for now, I'll have the, the cannon, um, the uh, the slayers, and now these uh, these warriors. And I, all, all I really need at this point is a, a general to lead the army, and I, I would actually already have a, a very small but playable... Um, Dwarf Army for 4th edition. Um, but, yeah, I think I think it will be a little, a little while, um, because, well, frankly, actually, what am I doing? I need to put this one in the front, so there we go. Uh, like this. Now they fit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now we have a, a small little assembled Dwarf Army. Um, yeah, I, I do have a few other things that really need painting, uh, really need doing. So the 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 dwarf general will sadly have to wait a little while. Um, but yeah, this is starting to look pretty awesome. It's starting to look like a like a real dwarf army. Very very happy with these so far. So yeah, next thing, um, if you ah, stupid 
freaking tripod. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna paint, I think I already showed that off last time, but I shall show it off again. Let's get the slayers to the side. Uh, is going to be Thunderers. Um, I think I also said this last time. It's been a while since I made those videos. Um, but these are definitely my favorite uh, miniatures from the Marauder ranges, or all, all the miniatures that Marauder did. I think they're just awesome. They're so full of character. Every single sculpt uh, from the Thunderer line is just amazing. Uh, there's there's no duds in it at all, and it's it's just fantastic. I really really love them. They have so much character, so much. And they're they're not even that difficult to paint either. So they they kept them simple, but still very distinct. And uh, yeah, just really really cool. I'm so super looking forward to these, and I think this will be the next thing that I paint, and then after them. I have uh, my Dwarf Thane here with the horn, and uh, I haven't uh, sprayed his base white yet, and you still need to do that. But yeah, he'll, he'll be the next thing, and then when I have painted him and the six um, Thunderers, this will actually be a properly playable army. So that's that's pretty, pretty awesome, uh, and I'm definitely looking forward to that moment. Uh, yeah, obviously I'm still missing like banners and stuff to really get the f uh, the, f the feel for, for this whole thing going. But I'm super happy with where I am at the moment. Yeah, but uh, as I said, I'm going to have to take a li tiny little break with this because there's a few other things that really need to be done. Uh, I really want to get the Undead for Oathmark uh, completed. You might have seen the other video for that. So... Um, That'll that'll certainly be one of the very very soon nextish projects. Also, the uh, I do have to invest a little bit more time in the um, commission because the deadline for that is coming up. So I, that'll that'll cut into my own painting time a little bit as well, sadly. But yeah, well, that's just part of this silly silly business. Uh, and the demon world rangers, I'll also paint before I go back to these dwarves. Although. Now that I'm done with the warriors, I am already missing painting these dwarves because they're just so much fun and I really enjoy them. I also hope that you enjoy these videos even if you hate the Goblin Green bases, but uh, they will they will continue because I love the look of this. I think it, you know, it isn't the same without the Goblin Green bases. And uh, if you don't like them, that's fine, but you know, just well you'll have to deal with it. Another another shot of these warriors as a little regiment, all ready to rumble. Just missing a little command to lead them into battle, but that shall soon not be a problem. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm certainly enjoying this project a lot. It's really, really brought me back to painting. Um, I was super burned out for a long time, and this has really rekindled my enthusiasm for the whole hobby, really. I mean, I don't think I would have ever touched the uh, the undead for Oathmark again if it wasn't for painting this cannon crew and just loving every moment of it. So, yeah. Anyone who enjoys my Oathmark videos more uh, will have to thank this little cannon crew. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. Please look forward to my next videos. I have a very different video coming up that's been in the pipeline for a long, long time, and I hope you enjoy that too. Something a bit historical and not miniature related. Ooh. So yeah, look forward to that, and uh, I'll see you around. Take care, guys.